Thank you for staying with me on the continuation of our vector error correction model and three ways of checking for causality in AViews. Please, before you go ahead to watch this video, I will encourage you to watch the prerequisite videos I've listed on the screen. Endeavor to watch VAR and four ways causality checks. Watch the video on how to specify vector error correction model. Watch those I made on how to estimate and interpret vector error correction model. Then watch the one I did before this one, which is vector error correction model and three ways causality checks, part one. As a recap, three ways of testing for causality. The first way is from the outcome of your regression. Look out for the significance of the T statistics and from there you can infer short run, long run and strong causal effects. You can also check for causality using the Granger and Ward causality test on the lagged explanatory variables. Decision criteria is if the chi-square statistic is below 0.05. For the pairwise Granger causality, that one shows you the direction of causality. Both hypotheses are shown on the screen. And how do you reject the null hypothesis? You do that if the value of the F statistics is below 0.05. From the prerequisite videos I encourage you to watch, I've already overemphasized steps 1 to 4. So I'm going to skip those procedures in this tutorial. So I'm going on straight to step 5, step 6, and step 7. So now let's move over to eViews and look at a practical example. The three variables I'll be using are PDI, PCE, and GDP in their log forms, and I have a quarterly data from 1970 quarter 1 to 1991 quarter 4. So let us start off with step 5, performing vector error correction model. We go to quick, estimate var, we indicate the vector error correction button, and here I list all the variables in their log forms. You will observe that I did not list the variables in their first difference. The simple reason is because the moment the vector error correction button is indicated, the algorithm will difference it upon estimation. Second, I'm going to change lag 2 to lag 1. Remember, when you are using the vector error correction button, you have to reduce your lag length by 1. I click on cointegration and I have one cointegrating equation. I'm going to leave it the way it is. Even if I have more than one, I will still indicate one just to simplify explanation. If you indicate more than one, it may be a bit problematic for you to interpret your results. I'm also using the unrestricted constant and no trend, which is case three. Remember in the vacuum system, just like over, there are no exogenous variables. So I leave this place blank, then I click OK. So here we have a result from the vector error correction estimates. And from here, we can infer long run, short run, and strong causal effects. But before I go into extracting those causal relationships, I'm going to explain this cointegrating equation, which is the error correction term. Remember, I specified my model as a log log uh, model, so interpretation will be in elasticity form. And remember, you have to invert your signs during interpretation. For instance, for PCE, it's going to be that a one percentage change in PCE we result in a 3.63% increase in PDI. For GDP, a 1% change in GDP will result in a 3.07% decrease in PDI. So that is how you interpret these results in the upper part of the table. Now in the lower part of the table, you can see the error correction, which is this, and you have the uh, lambda, which is the adjustment parameter. All these are short run coefficients. You can see with their different operators. And up here, you can see each of them as a dependent variable. So, in this section, you can extract both the long run and the short run and strong causal effects. If you look closely at the results, you only have the coefficients followed by the standard errors and the t statistics. We don't have the probability values. And remember, it is the p-values that gives statistical relevance to either the coefficients or the t-statistics. So we need to extract the p-values so that we can know how significant the regressors are in explaining the outcome variable. So to do that, we go to PROC, we click on Make System, and we maneuver to Order by Variable. Now you have all the variables specified here. Remember I told you 
that when you are feeding your variables into the vector error correction box, you indicate them in their raw forms or log forms. And the algorithm will um, estimate it using false difference. So you can see it here. It has appeared as difference. So when you are specifying it in the eViews box, indicates the variables either in their raw forms or in their logs. So this one is a proof to you that you don't have to indicate the variables in their false difference. So now to extract the p-values, I click on estimates. I don't change anything here. I simply click OK. So now we have the p-values. You can see it here. And here we have seen that eViews has given numberings to all the coefficients. If you look below the table, you will observe that each equation is specified. Again, you can see the specification here now is on false difference. So this is the one for PDI, this is the one for PCE, and here is the one for GDP. Each of them have their coefficients numbered. So here at a glance, we can easily see which coefficient is significant and which one that is not significant. Let us first identify long run causal relationship and remember long run causal relationship is indicated through the t statistics of the error correction term and the error correction term you can see is here i'm going to highlight it for you to see up to here these are the error correction term c1 is lambda you can see here c1 is lambda and every other thing in this bracket is error correction term. So for equation PDI, C1 is lambda. For equation PCE, C6 is lambda. And for equation GDP, C11 is lambda. So let's come up here to see whether lambda is significant or not. C1 is negative, which is a good sign. It tells us there's long run convergence. And the T statistics is negative 1.89. And the P value is 0.05. As a researcher, you may decide to set your alpha at 0.05 or 0.1, that is 5% or 10%. If alpha was set at 5%, then looking at this result, we cannot reject the null hypothesis of no long-run causal relationship. But if alpha was set at 10%, then we can say that there is long-run causal relationship at the 10% level. So it depends on the level of alpha that you have set for this hypothesis. So let's look at C6. C6, the coefficient of lambda, which is the adjustment coefficient, is also negative. It's a good sign. And we can see the p-value is below 1%. This is also a good sign. So this one clearly tells us that in the PCE model, which is this model, we can say that there is a long-run relationship in the model. Let's look at C11. It's also negative. This is a good sign. And also the p-value is below 1%, showing that in the GDP model, which is this one, there's a long-run relationship among the variables. So having explained long-run causal effects, looking at the p-values of the error correction term, let us now interpret or identify short-run causal effects. The short-run causal effect, for instance, for the PDI equation will be the coefficient of the PC equation, which is C3, and that of GDP, which is C4. So let's look at C3C4. So looking at C3C4, only C3, which is PCE, is significant at the 10% level. So we can easily say that a PCE has a short-run causal effect on PDI at the 10% level. Now let's look at the PCE equation. And we are looking at coefficient 7, which is coefficient of PDI, and coefficient 9. So let's look at coefficient 7 and coefficient 9. Coefficient 7 is significant. Coefficient 9 is not significant. So that means GDP does not have any causal relationship in the short run with PCE. But coefficient 7, which is that of PDI, is significant at the 10% level. So we can easily conclude that in the short run, PDI has a causal effect on PCE at the 10% level. So how about GDP? Looking at the GDP relationship, we are only concerned with coefficient 12 and coefficient 13. So coming back here, let's look at 12 and 13. And we can easily conclude that coefficient 13, which is that of uh, PCE, there is no short run causal effect from PCE to GDP. 
But we can conclude here, looking at coefficient 12, that PDI has a short-run causal effect on GDP at the 5% level. So I've shown you how to infer both long-run and short-run causal effects. You can also infer strong causal effects from the joint significance of the error correction term and the significance of the regressors. I will emphasize this more after conducting other tests. In my next video, I will cover Granger World Causality Test, the pairwise Granger Causality Test, and also perform some diagnostics. For further referencing, please look at these textbooks. They are very easy to understand. And also look up other journals that use the vector error correction model. Please don't go away. I'll be right back with the concluding parts of the series.